okay, we're talking about card making essentials or stamper essentials or really just paper craft essentials with this one. If you're gonna be playing with paper, you're gonna want a way to accurately and quickly trim the paper to the size that you need. There are a lot of different trimmers on the market um, and you can go way bigger than this and go way smaller than this. But this one is the one I would recommend to anyone that is starting out and wants to be successful. There are less expensive, smaller trimmers than this that you might think are more of a beginner level, but I want you to be successful. I want you to enjoy it and having the right kind of trimmer is important. So that is why I selected this particular one as what I'm calling a card maker essential. If you don't have any other trimmer, um, this is the one I would get. It's roughly about $30. You can usually find on sale for around 30. Um, sometimes it's, you know, you get a better deal, but, um, it's, this is a pretty, it is a very good value for 30. It will come with one blade in it and an extra blade. The blades themselves are what they call a high profile cartridge. High profile me is just referring to this half circle on top. It just makes it easy to hang on to. Even for those that have maybe acrylic nails, it's easy to grab and move. This little cartridge slides up and down and this little black rail that you see in here, that's what where your cutting line is. If we take a close look at the blade itself, we see a grooved line across this the orange um, cartridge there. That's where the blade is. The blade is this tiny little triangle. There it is. That's your blade. And to put it in and out on this plastic rail, there's two little indents right here. And it just fits right in there and then you're, you're good to go. So it's easy to, to replace or to change. When you first buy this tool, this little guy right here, this lock will be engaged and that prevents this piece from coming out. It will not come out that way. And so when you're not using it, that's how you want to store it. The reason you want that is because if you don't have it, this guy can flop forward and out like this. And so if you put it in a drawer or um, something, something can bump it and knock it open. And the more this gets played with, you can um, accidentally force your blade out of alignment or to lose it completely. And playing with these, see how much flexibility there is? Uh, if those get played with too much or bent out of whack, you won't have as true of a cut anymore um, because then your alignment is off. So that is why it's fantastic that Fiskars included that little locking mechanism in there. The other reason I like this one is it's the only it's the only portable trimmer like this that has a deck that is completely six inches wide, all the way over here to past six. Um, most decks are quite narrow. This is a Fisker brand too, but look at how narrow this one is compared to this guy. And this is just completely frustrating to me to have one this small. You can save a little bit of money by getting this one. The cutting part's going to be the same. But this is really, really frustrating and um, more of a pain than it is useful, in my opinion. Um, and then this guy folds out all the way out. And look at how far out it reads to 15 inches. Yeah, so we start over here and we have neg on the negative side of one. And then there's your zero. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 inches wide. And this ruler is completely level with your deck. So when you're putting a large piece of paper on there, this rail at the top here and here lines up exactly and they are flush with each other. So no matter where you're sliding this along and you're measuring out here, if I wanted to cut this um, to 10 inches, I just make it flush with that line and look for the 10 right here and line up the edge of the paper with the 10. Close it and trim. And it very quickly trims off that inch off of my paper. I absolutely love this one. The other thing I love about this one is it's very easy to trim off small bits of paper. Here's a quarter inch. So that was one inch. There's a quarter inch. Let me try to just shave off a little bit smaller of a piece. Look at how narrow this piece was that I just trimmed. This little skinny guy. So if you're wanting to, and look, it's perfectly straight on both edges. That is the way to test a trimmer, is to just shave off a little hair and see if it's even on both edges and that will show you its alignment. This is a fantastic trimmer. The other thing I like about it 
is on the deck. If we take a closer look, we have bold lines and measurements that are very common to card makers. We've got five by seven, four by six, four and a quarter by five and a half. I use that one almost every time, three by five. So all great, all great sizes for also for cropping photos. So you can put your photo in here and crop it to size or make it a little smaller or make a mat that's a, like a quarter inch wider. Very easy to do. And also the reason why I like it is the most common size of pattern paper or printed pattern paper is 12 inches by 12 inches and they almost always have an extra little label on the top or the bottom of the card. And so I love that this is wider than 12 inches so I can put this in here and just trim off that little bit. Now the last time I made it flush with the top but look down here it also has a little rail at the bottom so you can make it flush on either side. You can just line it up and trim off the excess so you have a nice paper in that sense. Having a trimmer that works well for you is key to having good success in your card making. Um, if you'd like to learn more about trimmers and other trimmers maybe upscale from this one you can check that out on another video called Next Level Crafting Tools. But for a beginner or um, also just in general, this is a good everyday trimmer that I honestly use quite a lot. When card making and rubber stamping, um, you will be surprised. If you're a beginner, you will be surprised at just how incredibly important quality paper quality cardstock really truly is to your to your success in having and having um, something you can be proud of uh, so many cards especially card packs or value card packs that you purchase um, are of a low quality paper and of a very lightweight paper I have one here for comparison Here is a value kind of white cardstock, and here is one that I would recommend. Let me just open this. All right, both are white. Oops, that was an envelope. <laughs> both are white, and both are come pre-cut and pre-scored. So, so far we are the same. Oops. Sorry about shaking the camera there. Okay, so these these look pretty much the same. They both are pre-scored, so they have a line indented in them. They both are very bright white. They both are very smooth. So the smoothness is important because the texture of a paper is important to um, how it takes st uh, stamping ink. So if you're gonna stamp an image on here, both of these are smooth, so this both of these should take the ink well, giving you a smooth, complete line of, of your stamped image. However, if you choose to buy or use paper that is textured, has like a waffle weave or a linen weave or anything like that, that texture um, can demand certain inks more than others. And, uh, and even then, even with the best quality ink that you can find or the best kind of ink, it can still be spotty when you're stamping not give you that true crisp image so so far these are the same however here's where the big difference is I don't know if this is gonna show up on camera I'm gonna show you at the the end so the one on top here is the cheap value one and the one on the bottom is the quality card makers choice one I don't know if you can tell but one of them is much thicker than the other one the value one is about a 65 weight. It feels almost like text weight in my hand. It's more than text weight, but it feels so thin compared to this one, which is 100 pound. 100 pound weight is very thick. It creases very easily. They both are scored. But this one, I kind of have to push it a little bit more. Now, even in the full position, so it's double thickness now, this one just feels, this feels like paper compared to the quality one. The thickness is undeniable. It's just so much thinner. And while they both can stand up in both directions, this one, especially if you put any weight on it, is going to slowly push down, put just like slide down like that. This one will stay upright. 
The other thing is, this is so thin that if I stamp on here and then I want to color, um, unless maybe if I'm using a light color pencil, most anything that's wet is going to bleed through and show through on this side. Because this one is so much thicker, it can handle a lot more than this one can, so you're less likely to see what you've done on this side. Also with ink pads, there's certain ink pads that are going to be really juicy and just lay down a lot of ink and you might it might even go all the way through and, and saturate this so that you can see it on this side. I've almost never seen that happen with a hundred pound. Um, there's nothing that compares to actually feeling it with your hands, but I can, so I, you, I think you just need to try it, but the hundred pound is incredible. Now you don't, if you want to try it because you're just not sure, um, we do sell at Craft Warehouse. If you visit one of our store locations, you can get um, eight and a half by eleven in a in um, white uh, just by the sheet. If you just wanted to try it, but I recommend the Card Maker's Choice fifty count. Now these come in ten and I think twenty and fifteen counts, but um, I like this one the best. This is the best value, and you get envelopes to coordinate with it. And I highly recommend this paper. And I use it on virtually every single card that I make, whether it's this or I buy the um, the 50 pack of eight and a half by 11 sheets that I can trim and cut and make different size cards with. Uh, those, I probably use those, I would say on 90, 95% of the cards I make. And I've been making cards for 20 years and I spent a lot of years trying to force and make these ones happen. Never happy with them, never happy. This one, if just you feel like a professional every time, get the card maker's choice. When you're paper crafting, whether that's scrapbooking, uh, documenting, planning, bullet journaling, card making, whatever the case may be, you're going to need a pen that you can count on, that you can depend on. This is the workhorse of a pen that you need. It's waterproof. It's archival. It is incredible. Um, I recommend the six pack. You can buy these individually. You can buy them in different colors, but for starting out, I would get the six pack black. The six pack is different size tips. So you can see in the purple here, they're labeled, but also so are the lids. So the very smallest tip is 005. This, this, the higher the number, the bigger the tip. The biggest one is 08. Let me show you what they look like. We'll start with the smallest. This is the 005. Five. At the end of the silver tip is the black nib. Look at how teeny, teeny, tiny that is. We'll just print and I'll do some cursive and some little squigglies and dashes and dots for you. So that is the 005. Here's the 01. already see a difference from 005 to 1. Here's the 2. And the 3. We're getting a little darker as we go. A little, not darker, but it's the same color. But it just seems that way because the tips are bigger. Okay, that was the five. And finally the eight. Here's the eight tip. So all of them are, are quite small to anyway. These are fantastic to have, whether you're sign, you know, addressing envelopes or signing your name on the cards that you've made. Um, in card making, they are super handy. If you have stamped an image and the, the, the ink skipped a little bit or you didn't get quite it inked well enough, you got a little spot that you need to uh, you know, fix, you can pick the appropriate size tip and just finish the line that didn't get inked well enough the trick card makers have been using for decades and it works really well. It is waterproof. 
Um, so it's great for addressing your envelopes. And also if you're doing any kind of documenting or um, even for signing things, thing, anything that needs to be archival and last forever, this is the ink you want to use. Highly recommend. Fantastic ink pen. Um, also artists really enjoy using these for drawing. Um, so it's a really well um, well thought of, well, well liked, and well used brand of pens. I highly recommend the Micron in black. If you're just starting to use clear stamps and you've never used them before, let me show you how they work. You're going to need a clear acrylic block. Now you can get these in different sizes and shapes. I like this one as a starter because this sort of scallop or flower-like edges are actually very make it very easy places for your fingers to rest and easy to hang on to. Also notice there are grid lines and these are etched into the block and these make it easy for lining things up. To use a clear stamp, when you buy a clear stamp uh, package, it's usually a set, something like this. And these plastic sheets you're going to want to save. Sometimes they're connected, sometimes not. These are your carrier sheets and how you store your stamps when you're not using them. When you want to stamp, uh, use one of these stamps, you're going to peel it off of the plastic carrier sheet. And one side is smooth and one side is bumpy. The bumpy side is the side that you put the ink on and stamp down. So you attach it to your block. It just sits right on top of there. It just like a window cling. It just stays where you put it. The great thing about clear stamps is that um, everything is clear, the block and the stamp itself. So you can see exactly where you're stamping. So at this point you that would then uh, add ink and stamp it where you want. You can see exactly what you're going to do. Let me show you how that works. So I'm going to press this just tapping up and down onto an ink pad. Almost all ink pads are a raised foam like this. See how that black line is standing out above the white case. So you just tap it like this. Do not smash. Don't push hard. If you have ink in your pad, you shouldn't have to do that. Just tap it like this. Decide where you want it. You can look right down through the stamp itself. Press straight down and apply a small amount of pressure. You don't have to push hard. Let it sit there and with, with a, that medium pressure for about five seconds, letting that ink absorb into the paper and then lift straight up. And you have a perfectly crisp, beautifully stamped image. Common mistakes are pressing too hard or rocking and rolling the stamp, like, or being unsure and you might drop it or skip it and get something like that or not re-inking when you're going to ink it again or rocking and rolling like this and you're pushing so super hard look at how blurry that image got so just kiss it to the paper it's not you don't stamps are not like they used to be they are much improved just stamp hold with medium pressure for about five seconds let the ink transfer lift straight up and you get that perfect image but you can see how handy having that clear block is. An excellent ink pad. I, would, I recommend this to all levels from absolute beginner to advanced stampers. This is a well-loved ink and definitely a favorite among professional crafters as well. This archival ink is jet black in color. It's the only ink pad that at Craft Warehouse you can get in this size and in a large. And it, if you look at it, it's acid free. So you can definitely use this in your scrapbooks or your planners or any kind of document documenting that you like to do. So it's, you're safe to be in your photos. It's permanent. So it's not going to fade. It's going to stay where you stamp it. And it's waterproof. That is key because that means that you can put over, you can color with, uh, with like watercolors or pencils or markers or whatever and the image will stay where it's supposed to, will not bleed, won't move, it's waterproof. If you were to stamp an image in this ink on an envelope and then it rained in the delivery of that mail, it will not, that, that image, the black ink of this image won't run. Waterproof. Let me show you the ink pad itself. So this is a raised pad. 
So that means that the ink pad itself is above the plastic carrier or tray that it's in. So any this will ink any size stamp, smaller than this or bigger than this. And the ink itself is a nice black, deep black ink. The pad is a very firm cloth pad, very, very firm. That's one of the reasons why I like to recommend this to a beginner because most beginners press really, really hard when they're inking a stamp um, until they kind of learn that that's not necessary. But having a really firm pad definitely helps push back against the the uh, first time users. <laughs> so see how hard I was press I was doing that. This is what a first time user does. Now you can still definitely over ink a stamp. This is how you should ink it. Or if you have a stamp that's larger than the pad you take the pad to the stamp itself and ink like this. And then you can see that it's got black ink on it. And then you're just going to press, hold for a few seconds and lift and you get a beautiful waterproof permanent black image. I highly recommend that stamp pad, that stamp pad. Um, let me put a little water on it. I've got water in this bottle water over here too so that we can see that the ink does not run see that your image is perfectly stable no bleeding I got water all over that guy and he's not the color the stamped image is not moving it is waterproof waterproof excellent ink pad highly recommend Once you begin stamping and making cards with uh, rubber stamps that then use ink, you need a way to clean your stamps. Uh, there's a lot of different methods, a lot of different cleaners. You can get spray cleaners and scrubby pads and all kinds of things. I like to recommend this one, especially to um, beginners who um, haven't grown up on have, relying on a cleaner. Um, you know what? This is new technology. You don't have to have a cleaner. You don't have to spend uh, you don't have to spend money on buying cleaners. You just buy one of these one time. This is the Lawn Fawn Stamp Chamois. Lawn Fawn is the brand name. It comes in a package like this. And when you use it, you just simply hydrate it. You get it wet, run under, under um, water, and just move it with your fingers and, and until it becomes flexible and something that is moldable like this. So this is mine. It's well loved. This is proof that I take care of my stamps and love my stamps. So they it will become stained over with use. That is a that is where that like a badge of honor. You're not meant to wash these or put them in the, you're not meant to put these in the washer or dryer. You just get them wet and wring them out and that's it. No soap, no no chemicals. This is very earth friendly. You're not throwing away baby wipes and paper towels and that kind of thing. Um, you're not having to rebuy scrubby pads. You just need one of these one time. If you leave it out when after you've used it, it will dry hard. Here's one that I that is has dried completely, all the moisture's out of it, and it just dries dries completely stiff like this. This one I probably the last time I used it I probably just went like that, and it just it just dries. So all I have to do is if it's very firm and it's just stuck in this position, it's just kind of like a sponge. All I got to do is get it wet again. Now I have water here. This isn't enough water, but it kind of gets the, gets it going here. The best way to do this is in the kitchen sink or in a bathroom sink, and just get it, just have it running underwater, and you're just move, just wring it out, let it fill with water, wring it out, let it fill with water several times until it completely can hydrate. This one's starting to get some hydration in it, starting to become more moldable. But you want to get it completely wet and just wring it, and then you're good to go. Now, if you're doing a craft session, like we'll say you're going to hang out for the afternoon and do some stamping, you might even just keep a little bowl handy, or I just have mine in a little plastic bag and just occasionally I'll give it a little spritz, just so it's always fresh and, and ready for use, and I can just wring it out in here, just get, get out that extra, I'm squeezing it to get out any extra liquid, because you just need it to be slightly damp. Then to clean your stamps... When you're done using it you're just going to wipe the ink off now it depends on what kind now this one i used 
a washable or a water-based ink so the ink came completely off and have a totally clean stamp again now if you use a permanent kind of ink your stamp will become stained that's normal what you do like these two I have used previously I'm gonna put it right next to this guy I'm at this block so you can see, compare the two put a paper underneath see how this one is totally clean this is the one I just cleaned and this one is stained because I used a permanent ink on it all you need to do is wipe it until no more ink is coming off and then you're good to go it's just stained it's and that's a normal thing that happens when you're using quality um, permanent ink it's totally fine you just want the transfer you just don't want any transfer so you just wipe it clean clean like that and you are good to go and then to store your stamps you peel them back off of here and put them back on the right place on the sheet like this just put them back on their little carrier sheet which is usually two pieces of acetate and that's how you store your stamps when you're your clear stamps when you're not using them you can also use the stamp chamois to clean your rubber stamps or if you have um, the cling um, rubber without the wood same thing you're just gonna clean it with your stamp chamois so for my book the best cleaning option is L'Enfant's Stamp Chamois. It's key to have the adhesive that works. If, you've, if you're just getting into paper crafting or playing with paper at all, you're definitely going to need adhesive. Adhesive of some kind. Now there's all kinds of glue out there and every glue has a job. And it can be intimidating um, to see all of your choices and not know where you even begin. Um, I want to recommend this one. This is Tombow Mono Multi Liquid Glue. It has two tips, a small applicator tip and a wide applicator tip for putting down a lot or a little. One, call, one is called a pin tip and one is called a broad tip. The I like this one because first of all, it's affordable. This bottle is going to last you a very long time. Second of all, it works. It is strong holding, but it gives you some time, a little bit of flexibility to get things glued down the way you want. We can be a little, especially as a beginner, it can be a little intimidating to be crafting with glue that you're not used to, or you've here you created something and you're trying to get it glued down just so, and if you are using an immediate a hold, hold kind of glue, um, once you put it down, that's where it lives, right? <laughs> We've all been there. So using a liquid glue like this one, it makes it a little easier to maneuver it. This one is also very um, universally um, known. You can find this glue almost anywhere. And it is, so it has a very good brand name. It's from Japan. The brand name is Tombow. And also it can use a lot of different things. Now it's called um, mono, mono multi liquid glue because it can be used either permanently or temporarily. To use it permanently, I have a, black, a piece of black paper here just because I wanted to show it to you. But here it is, um, as it comes out of the tube, it's just a white. So there's the um, pin tip and let's go ahead and do the broad tip too. the broad tip you squeeze and then stop squeezing then you can push it around okay now if you use it while it is still white while you can see it your bond will be permanent if you allow it to become tacky and go clear see how this one is because I put such a thin layer down it's starting to look clear once that's totally clear, then that bond will be temporary kind of like a post-it note so that'll be your temporary bond Okay, so white, permanent, clear, temporary. So that's two in one already, plus you have two tips, so it's almost like having four different glues. Also, this is great not only for paper, but you can use this in photos, so say for your scrapbooks. You can use it um, also with for glitter, because it dries clear, so your glitter will just be whatever color your glitter is. That's great for small things or big things. So like I say, to you, I you typically use the, the, the smaller tip but I'm usually gluing smaller things. You don't need a lot. And don't put the adhesive right here. If we put the adhesive right next to the edge, what does liquid, what does liquid glue do? It's gonna smoosh out. So all of this is a good placement. 
this is bad placement. Let me glue it down so you can see what I mean. Okay, right there. See how it came out the edges there? So now I'm gonna have glue sticking out there. So um, anything that touches it, or if I drop some glitter on there, it's just gonna collect that stuff. Dust will collect there, whatever it is. The good news is it does dry clear. So if you do use too much, especially when you're just figuring it out, um, it'll be clear so it won't be as noticeable. And once it's, the clear isn't gonna be tacky forever, but eventually it won't be tacky anymore, but it is gonna be a little bit darker and more noticeable in a darker paper. But if, say, we were using gluing to a white paper, you would just have a little bit of clear there and when it would just be a little bit glossy in the light is all. So it's pretty easy to, um, uh, it's pretty forgiving in that sense. So what if you have something really, really narrow and thin or lacy die cut sometimes just doing little dots like this or I'm almost doing dashes, but see how I'm going right down the middle. Don't go to the edges and touch the applicator to the paper. Don't hold it above the paper. And then we can glue this guy down. And we don't have any adhesive coming out the edges at all. Nice clean adhesion. And I can squish it around till I get it right. And then within a few seconds, it'll be permanently there. This stuff has gone almost completely clear. I'm gonna push down two fingers on that, on that. And it is tacky, stuck to my fingers now. <laughs> but it's just like a post-it note. So if you need something to hold something temporarily, you can do that. You can also put this glue into smaller, into more fine tip applicators. I definitely do that. I like to put my Tombow into a little applicator bottle for when I'm doing like really, really fine cut detail things. But Mono Multi Liquid Glue is fantastic. It's also great for paper to um, chipboard and most every kind of paper, pattern paper, all of that excellent glue I highly recommend especially as this is a staple um, so if I say that I would recommend this to a beginner that's just because it's so easy to use and and I know you'll be successful and I know that it is a permanent hold when you're ready for it to be a permanent hold and I also know that it can be very forgiving the one big mistake that people make with liquid glue not this one but all liquid glues is holding the glue bottle away from the paper. Let me see if I can show you a side angle here. So people are holding it up here, not touching the paper. And then when they, when you do that, like little kids with Elmer's, look at how thick of a line of a bead that just went down. As opposed to touch it and then drag it along. See the difference just between those two? So this one, you're not only are you gonna use a lot more wastefully, but also then when you wanted to glue something down, it can squish out the edges. I mean, it's definitely glued down, but look at how much, what a mess. Yeah, so touch the tip to less is more, white is permanent, clear is temporary. Two tips, I like the small tip myself. Dries totally clear, so if you do mess up, it's not gonna be, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> I highly recommend this glue for a beginner. When we're talking about card making essentials, um, you're definitely going to come across situations where you're going to want to color in something you've stamped. And there's so many different options. And that also can be really overwhelming. Um, and many of them, you know, it's a little bit of a learning curve to figure out what is comfortable to you and how to use different kinds of coloring mediums. Um, so the one that I recommend to almost everyone that is just starting out are watercolor pencils. They're very much like using a color pencil, so that's not unfamiliar territory. And um, you can get them in different sizes of sets. The brand really isn't important. It's more about how to use a watercolor pencil. And what I love about them is you don't have to color things perfectly perfect. Let me show you how to use it. So on these little Tweety Birds here, I've got, let's make this one blue. So I'm just gonna color in a circular motion and I'm not worried about filling in every little bit. I'm just getting some color where I want that main color to be. So I'm just coloring in circles. I'm just going to color his whole little body and feather, tail feathers, his wing, his head, his body in that blue. So you can see it's definitely not perfect. And I'm going to add 
I'm gonna take this dark blue now and we'll just put this maybe where I want it a little darker maybe under his wing a little bit maybe his tail feathers at the bit base maybe around the fluff at the top of his head and maybe a little bit around the sides maybe his chest so I've just really just kind of scribbled that on there see how I've just added to that now the fantastic beauty of watercolor pencils is that um, you don't have to you don't have to do a lot of work and that it's so easy to now make it come alive and all you got to do is in introduce water or something liquid so you can use um, a paintbrush of your choice and just a little glass of water or um, you can get a water brush which is a paintbrush with the barrel is um, something that you can unscrew and run under water and fill the barrel with water so that then you always have water when you need it. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna use. And I wanna make sure you can see this happen, so I'm gonna bring this really close. So when we, I'm gonna do the light area first, I'm just gonna add a little bit of water and manipulate, just move it around all of the blue areas. And I'm just color it, making that whole little guy colorful. And see what happens. The color of the pencil um, basically liquefies. And now we can blend all those colors together. And now I get this really cool variegated bluebird. Mine looks a little bit yellow because I had yellow on here for on my paintbrush first, so I should have cleaned it first, but I actually like how that how that turned out. To clean it, you just need a paper towel and you just, um, so it was a happy accident, but you just use a paper towel to get off any excess color. You can squeeze the barrel to bring down more water and just keep doing that until it runs clear for you. There we go, mostly done. Okay, so let's try that again. We'll make it even more blue one. Okay, so this one I colored very lightly. Now I'm gonna use the darker blue color and I'm gonna color that the same way that I did the light blue on the other one. Just coloring in circles. Just getting the color where I want it. Okay. See, I just was literally just scribbled it. Now I don't have another darker blue in my pile here, so I'm gonna take what I have and I'm just gonna press harder where I want it to be darker. So the first time I was using maybe a light to a medium pressure, and now I'm just gonna, now I'm using more of what I would say is a heavy, a heavy pressure to make it a little darker where I want it. Now let's take our brush, try to get all that yellow out of there. Okay. Start with the lightest area and just get that wet and it just starts to move the trunks of pencil liquidy and it's a technical term liquidy <laughs> and it moves it in and you just fill in all those spaces that didn't get you didn't touch with your color and now go over the dark areas and blend those in and down into the light area. And look at all this this beautiful shading that just happened and all i did was add water isn't that pretty so you can color in their little leaves here and just vary the pressure of how hard you push to get lighter or darker or add another color here i'll add some yellow to this one and a little bit of blue on one side part of it and then I'm going to do the same thing. You just touch that and it just liquefies it immediately and blends it immediately. And I, now I have a colored in image with minimal supplies. It was very easy to do. Uh, you don't, it's not, it doesn't take a lot of skill. <laughs> and all I added was water. Isn't that fun? So watercolor pencils is something that I would highly suggest as um, one of your first um, forays into colored mediums for card making. When it comes to card making essentials, 
you want something to add sparkle um, glitter pizzazz shine um, and there's so many options glitter can but dry glitter can be messy uh, stickles or glitter glues can be sticky and tacky and take time to take a long time to dry other options require other tools um, so what about something fast easy and fun to use that's where this one comes in if you don't have anything that is helps you add shine and glitter you're gonna like this one this is the clear wink of Stella it is a brush marker now when you first purchase it you can buy it in a one pack or a three pack and it has this little black ring on it we need to remove that for your first use so you're gonna open it up just twist it open twist open this side there's no ink in this barrel just yet all the ink is in here which is actually clear but we need to remove this black ring that's just in there for shipping and just toss that aside you don't need that anymore and then for your first use you want to well actually every use shake it up really well because glitter is heavier than the liquid the clear liquid marker that's in there so it does settle it can settle so you want to shake it up really really well now this is a transparent glitter and it is going to just add a little subtle shine look at the lid see it has a little bit of glitter into it that's what it's going to do for you so it is transparent so whatever color or image you put it over it's just going to add a little shimmer and shine to your project now the first time you use it you might need to get some of the ink to work down so i'm just going to give it a little bit of a push and let me get some scrap paper here and then just we'll get just enough to get the ink coming down do we see that little glitter in the t barrel now so I'm just going to do it until I got it coming down and make sure my brush is all nice and good and get out any extra drips. Okay. So look at the sparkle you're going to get and the shine. Isn't that pretty? Okay. So how do you use this? You can add this to things and you can use it to help you with things. So let's take this little guy. Here's a card I've already made and this maybe I want this heart to be sparkly. I'm just going to literally paint on top of the heart and it will still be a pink heart but now it will be a sparkly pink heart see how like in two or three seconds i just added so much pizzazz to this card imagine having this to this is like your magic wand and you can add that sparkle to anything so let me see do i have another card here's another card i've made it's quite pretty quite finished but maybe I want these pine needles to have a little bit of sparkle. Easy to do. I know, trust me, once you get this pin, you're gonna be looking for things to add sparkle to. The first time, I'll tell you a secret, the first time I got one, I grabbed a handful of my business cards and like made little highlights on it. But look, now my pine cones are sparkly. It just dresses things up so much. It's so much fun. Here is a cute little die cut card. And I'm going to add some sparkle to this guy's mustache. Because I like how he's got them like tied in, in little strings. His little mustache is tied up in ribbons and bows. And now he has a sparkly mustache. And that's going on white. Now let's do make her hat pink. Or her pink hat sparkly. I'm just painting over the pink part, right? But I'm making the pink sparkly now. It dries quite quickly. It's easy to maneuver. It's a, it is real bristles here, so it's like painting with a paintbrush. It is painting with a paintbrush, but with magic fairy dust sparkles in it. And now she has a pink sparkly hat. And he has a candy cane, so he's gonna get a nice sparkly candy cane. Just paint it on. Look at that, and now Sparkle hat, sparkle stash, and sparkle candy with a little Wink of Stella. Something else you can do with this. Do we, when you're using watercolors, watercolor pencils, here's a watercolor pencil. I just simply scribbled this on in pushing hard to medium to light. I'm gonna, instead of water, I'm gonna use this and I'm just gonna brush it across and it's blending those colors, the pencil. It's turning the pencil liquid essentially but with sparkle power. And I'm just gonna keep going till I run out of color. And now, here it is with just water, and here it is with sparkle. 
Look at that. I love a tool that can do more than one thing. Now, if you color over something that is has a little bit of color to it, like something that the color can move, like a water-based product, you just wanna go like this on some scrap paper to make sure you have all that color off. I do. So now I can make my little, this little Tweety Bird right here sparkly without, without the worry that I'm introducing any red. I'm just gonna color everything that is blue on him. And he is gonna be all dressed up in his sparkle, in his sparkle feathers. See the difference? No sparkle. And ooh, look at this guy shine. So sparkly. And then he was, this was colored with watercolor, so I'm just gonna like this. Make sure I don't have any extra color on there on my, on my scrap. And then just keep the lid on when you're not using it. Shake it up before I reuse. But look at that sparkle. Isn't that pretty? It has a slight golden hue to it. It's so pretty. It just adds a little touch of shine to your next project. Wink of Stella Clear. You can get it in a one pack or you can get it in a three pack. And now when you, when you completely use this up, save it because you can fill this barrel with water. You can't, re we don't have refills for this one, but you can fill the bottle up with water and then make your own version of a paintbrush or a water brush. Isn't that cool? Another crafting essential adhesive is some kind of foam dot tab or um, strip. What that is is just it's a dimensional tape. It's basically foam with sticky on both sides and some sort of protective paper layer. You can buy these in all different formats. A plain white dot is definitely great for if it's your first time purchasing one. And what these are, let me just open one. So if you wanna use one, you're just gonna remove it from its carrier sheet and you would stick it on that which you want to adhere. Now you could put four on here, one in each corner, but something about this big, maybe two is enough. And then you just, so it's ready. And then when you want to stick it down, you're just gonna peel off that paper layer and stick it on your project where you want it. And it's going to be held up above your paper base, giving you dimension. See that? And, it, and then it creates the shadow. We can see the shadow over here. And it just is another way to enhance your card making or whatever your paper crafting is to give it that next level of dimension. You can um, add a couple of layers. So let me do that. So to do that, you're gonna put one down, remove the paper tab, and then take another of the same size and put it directly on top. So we're sticky to sticky, remove that paper. And now we have double, and then we can sit, we'll glue this one guy next to this one. Now he sits up twice as high. So you can see how you can get layers of dimension and then you can, you can continue raising that up and adding more and more. Um, probably two is about as high as you're gonna go on a card because you want it to be a fairly slim profile when you go to mail this. You know, you don't want it to catch on in the mechanisms in the mailing system. But uh, for if you were gonna do something like in a shadow box or this a home decor piece or something like that, you can definitely add even more. So here's a card where I used the foam dots on my penguin and my heart. Now my snow, where it says let it snow, that's already raised up. You can see it's quite thick. So I needed to overcome that thickness at the top of his head. And then I had to make the bottom, because the bottom is not sticking onto the snow part, I had to make that double thick. So if we look at the side edge, I have got two stacked at the bottom right here and just one layer up here. And that gave me a nice flat level penguin <laughs> to lay onto my card. Isn't that cute? Now you can get these in white, in black, um, and in squares, and in dots, like this one. Um, but a foam dot is highly recommended and an essential tool in your crafting arsenal.